I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Pornatic Wife Podcast, episode number 196, The Relationship Between Pornography and Sex. Hello, my lady. If you have a spouse that is struggling with a pornography problem, then you are in the right place. My name is Jolene Wynn, and I am a life coach, a member of the LDS faith, and the wife of a former porn addict. And in this podcast, I am going to teach you how to change the way that you are affected by your husband's choices. We can't change him, but what we can do is change the way that you respond when he makes the decisions that he does. I'm going to teach you how to manage your brain, how to process all of the emotions that seem so overwhelming to you so that you can finally live a life where you aren't living in fear of triggers and relapses. And by learning how to manage your mind and process your emotions, you are no longer going to be running on an emotional roller coaster, but you are going to start feeling so much more in control of your life, no matter what your husband is doing. And I'm going to teach you all of that on this podcast. I can't wait to get started with you. And I'm so glad that you are here. I promise you, you're in the right place. All right, my ladies, welcome back to the podcast for a brand new episode. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. And I just want to dive right in and I am going to, but the reason that I brought up this topic today, the reason that I was thinking about this and wanted to talk about this on the podcast is because this is what has been in all of my messaging lately, in all my messages on DMs you guys send me on Instagram. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you can at Jolene Wynn Coaching. I've been getting a lot of messages about this because I'm doing a special three-day coach week this week that I want to invite you to come. You, you don't have to be a client. You can just join. It's $19 and you can come. And for three days from February 14th, 15th, and 16th at 10 a.m. Eastern each day, I am going to be talking all about sex and pornography and we are going to fix the relationship that you have with sex the way that you think about it we're going to be going over sexual triggers we're going to be i'm going to teach you how to conquer those i'm going to teach you how to navigate sexual expectations both the ones that he has for you and the ones that you have for him i'm going to talk about how to finally separate pornography and sex in your brain so that they are no longer intertwined And I am also going to be talking about how to uncover subconscious sexual shame and where we usually see that. So if that sounds like something you want to do, I will put the link in the show notes, but you can just head to my website, jolenewin.com, go to the coach week tab and you can sign up again. It's just $19 to join me for all three days. And even if you can't come live, I would encourage you to sign up so that you get access to the replay of each one of these calls. So this is stuff you aren't going to want to miss, but if you can come live, please do so that I can coach you. I will be doing a lot of coaching on these calls. So come so that I can coach you on your specific triggers, your husband's expectations of you, the things that are coming up for you personally. This is your chance to get help from me. So because I have been talking all about this in my emails and on Instagram, I've been getting a lot of messages about this. And so I wanted to address it here today. What is the relationship between pornography and sex. How are they related? How are they not related? Because if you guys have been listening to me for a hot minute, you guys know that the thing that I always say is that pornography is not about sex. And that's what I'm going to teach you again here today. Okay. Pornography is not about sex. Okay. Pornography is about an escape in the same way that when you feel stressed or overwhelmed, you might turn to food or you might turn to social media to distract yourself. This is exactly what's happening for anybody that chooses pornography. It's an emotional escape, okay? So any emotion that they feel that feels uncomfortable, whether that's boredom or loneliness or um, anything negative, they don't wanna feel it, they don't know how to feel that, and so they are reaching out to something that feels better. So most of the time, what I see is my clients have a spouse who was exposed to pornography in the prepubescent years, okay? Usually between the ages of eight and 11, that's the majority of my clients, okay? So along before their brains could even understand it, they were exposed to pornography, okay? And what they found was that that was something that their brain said, okay, that feels better, let's do that, okay? So maybe even at first, it wasn't a sexual thing, it was just a curiosity, it was like, I don't understand what I'm looking at, I'm curious, 
I want to look at it more. I want to understand it. That's what our brain does. Okay. And notice ladies is that the pornography industry, the adult industry is designed specifically to elicit a sexual response. And after all, that's what pornography is. Pornography is anything that elicits a sexual response in you. That's its intention. And there is a billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollars of an industry that are specifically designed to create this reaction in individuals and they're very good at their job they know exactly what they're doing and that's what they're doing they are creating sexual responses in their viewers in the people who are exposed to it that's their intention and they're very good at creating that that's the job that's the business okay so agree with it or not that's exactly what it's designed to do so if your body responds that way if whether it's you or your husband or whoever's been exposed to pornography if their body responds that way it's working <laughs> It is doing exactly what it's designed to do. Now, if you don't know how to control that, if you don't understand that that's the response that's being created and you don't know how to manage that, that's when it can become a problem, okay? Because we have an emotional cycle going on and then we have a chemical cycle going on. That's what happens with pornography, okay? So with pornography, there's the emotional cycle which causes the reach out in the first place, right? You have um, a thought, that creates a feeling that's negative. And then you say, well, I don't wanna feel that. And so you wanna reach out for something that feels better. And if in the past you have had a chemical reaction to pornography that gives you that rush of dopamine and endorphins and all of the pleasurable chemical reactions that go off as your body is designed to do, it's just been hijacked by pornography, right? Then your brain says, hey, remember that thing that felt better earlier? Let's do that instead. I don't wanna sit and feel lonely and bored. I'd rather feel something positive. I would rather not feel bored. I'd rather scroll on my phone and look at images that make me feel better. So there's the emotional cycle of why you reach out to it in the first place. And then there's the chemical cycle of what's actually going on in the body at the time. Does this make sense? Is this, is this helping? So pornography, even though it is sexual, is not actually about sex. Again, most men and women who have been exposed to pornography have been exposed at a prepubescent year between the ages of eight and 11. And so that is the chemical cycle that's been going on and the habitual cycle, that emotional cycle. So if you learn from the age of eight that there's something that feels better outside of you, then anytime there's something negative that comes up, you're going to turn to that thing. And so the more entrenched that is, the more ingrained that is in your system, the more intention it takes to uproot it. Okay, now this becomes more of a problem to your spouse once you get married, right? Because pornography is sexual. It is designed, right, again, to elicit a sexual response. And when you are married, you want that to just be between the two of you. You want those sexual responses to only be between the two of you. That's why we get married, right? For many reasons, but that's one of the, one of the, beautiful things about, I believe, in our relationship is that God has intended marriage to be, to be a man and a woman and having these sexual relations just with each other, right? And those sexual responses is are amazing and exactly how our body has been designed by God. But again, just being hijacked by an industry that is targeting it for profit, okay? Knowing that if it keeps people hijacked on it, then it will continue to create a profit, which is their whole job. Okay, so when you have pornography and it is sexual, our brains as the wife can very much connect the two, make them intertwined. That pornography is sexual, therefore it must be about sex. It must be about he's not satisfied with me. It must be that he is interested in something more. And this can create a lot of drama and headache and anxiety in our own sexual relationship with their spouse. Right? I know you guys have felt this. I've been getting messages about it all week. That's why I'm doing the coach week that I'm doing this week is it causes sexual triggers. Like I want to buy lingerie. This is one that I got. I want to buy lingerie, something special for Valentine's day, but I'm nervous because I want to get my husband's opinion, make sure it's something he likes, but I don't want to show him images, especially if they're on a model because I'm worried that it'll trigger him or that he'll compare me when I'm wearing it to the image that he had seen of it right? Sound familiar? That is a sexual trigger, some kind of insecurity that you are having internally about, you know, some type of self-consciousness or self-worth. And that's what's getting triggered by this thing. And you've attached that to sex, right? It seems like the pornography has created or ruined the, your relationship with sex because pornography is sexual. 
Does that sound at all familiar? Okay, what I wanna offer, ladies, and I know it's so hard to wrap our brains around, is that porn is a problem, yes. Is it negative, yes. Should he never have introduced it into your marriage, yes. But what I wanna offer is that you start releasing the hold that your brain has on porn and sex being related. Your sexual relationship with your husband has nothing to do with him watching porn. Now, the thing that I really wanted to dive into on this particular podcast is what if he's using porn when he has a sexual urge? How are they not related? Here's my answer to that. It's that same emotional cycle. Okay, remember we have an emotional cycle and a chemical cycle. Okay, so the emotional cycle is I'm feeling something negative I don't wanna feel. Instead, I'm, instead of actually processing it because he doesn't know how to do that, then he is just going to react and give in and do something that feels better, right? Or distract from that emotion. The chemical cycle that's going on is you have a sexual urge that comes up, which is just a feeling, ladies. We don't need to make this stronger than it is. It's just a feeling. And rather than sit and feel it, he gives in, okay? In the same way that you can have an urge to eat chocolate, And you might think, oh my gosh, I have such a craving or an urge. Sometimes we call them cravings, right? In pregnancy, when they feel stronger, right? And maybe they are hormonally. I'm not a doctor. I don't know, right? But they're like, oh, I have a craving for this one particular thing. Now, most of the time, we are in a place, sometimes we're in a place where we can actually indulge in that craving or in that urge, right? We indulge in it. But like, oh my gosh, I am having a huge craving for a chocolate milkshake with hot fudge. Well, if you're in a place to make that available to you, you will go and you will do it. You will give in, you will indulge in that craving and satisfy the craving. It makes it feel better temporarily until you digest and you feel better and then you want it all over again, right? Same thing with pornography. If you have a sexual urge, rather than just feel the discomfort of having an urge and not being able to give in, then what you will do is actually give in and indulge in that sexual urge with pornography and it will satisfy until it runs out and then that comes back up again. Now, here's what I wanna offer is that you don't have to give into these these cravings or into these urges, even sexually. Ladies, he might have a sexual urge while he's at church or while he's at work. And yes, he has the capability of just feeling the urge or even just ignoring it until later. And that alone shows us that you have control over your sexual urges. I think it's very tempting to want to make pornography the and the thing that is in charge, right? Almost like pornography is the bad guy. And I'm not saying that it's not. I believe that it is. I believe that it is bad. But I also want you guys to notice that your husband has a lot more agency over this than he understands or realizes. And that's what I also want you to notice. You have a lot more agency, a lot more choice over how this is affecting you and your sexual relationship than you realize. Most of the time, we are the ones bringing pornography into our relationship mentally and emotionally. And I'll give you an example in just a minute. But if your husband has a sexual urge and then indulges in that with pornography, what he's actually doing is just distracting from an uncomfortable feeling. Because how uncomfortable is it to sit with a sexual urge that you can't actually do anything about? It's a little uncomfortable, especially if you don't know how to just sit with that. He doesn't know how to sit with hopelessness or loneliness or boredom in the same way that he doesn't know how to sit with a sexual urge. He doesn't know how to process his feelings. He doesn't know how to just let it sit there and stay and not indulge. In the same way that if you always give in to your cravings for a chocolate milkshake or for whatever it is, tortilla chips, potato chips, whatever, a soda, a drink of coffee, whatever it is that your urge is, it's like, oh, I just wanna go get a drink of coffee. Oh, I just wanna go get a drink of whatever. If you have never sat with that urge and just let it sit and process and pass through it, you don't know what it's like to actually not indulge in it either. And that's the same for your spouse. And he started this when he was you know, eight years old. So this is a habit and a pattern, a neural pathway in his brain that has been going for a very long time. Now, again, I'm not excusing his behavior. I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm not saying that, well, then there's nothing that we can do. There's actually a lot that we can do. We're just trying to control the wrong thing, okay? Now, again, what I wanna focus on this podcast is understanding that even though pornography is sexual, it's not about sex. The whole point of the porn industry 
is to create a profit. And what they are doing is hijacking the chemical process and the beautiful sexual responses that God created. They're hijacking that for their own benefit. And when they do that, right, when we accept that, when we choose to partake in that, in the same way that a drug can then have a chemical response and kind of not take over your body, but the chemical processes in your body's change, the same with pornography. The chemical processes and the neural pathways, the patterns in your brain change. And yes, they can be changed back. This is the beautiful part that I think we don't spend enough time talking about is that just because your brain patterns have happened one way doesn't mean that they have to stay that way permanently. They can be altered. So just because um, pornography has created, his um, indulgence in pornography has created certain neural pathways right now doesn't mean they can't be changed. And in the same way that your husband's pornography problem, your response to that has generated certain Um, neural pathway responses doesn't mean those can't be changed. And that's what I want to get into this example real quick. So for example, I had a messenger follow me and I'm going to pull this up because it was such a good example. And that's what I wanted to talk about here. Um, She said, um, let me find it real quick. Should he never have looked at porn? Yes. This is me talking to her. Do you question your actions um, because he brought it into your life? Yes. But since you are questioning it and it's here, now what are you going to do with it? Ladies, I have so many of you that message me and say, well, he's the one that brought it into our, he's the one that brought it into the bedroom. And I am not disagreeing. Yes, he brought it into the bedroom. But I want you to notice this came from a question of, when you think your husband is distracted. Have any of you guys ever thought that? When you are having a sexual relationship with your spouse and you are just on high alert for any indication that he's thinking about something other than you. And one of those might be, well, he seems distracted. Maybe one, ladies, I want you to notice that that's just your interpretation of his behavior. Maybe he's not distracted at all. Maybe he's actually really enjoying it and you're just assuming that he's distracted. Number two, let's say he is distracted for argument's sake. You are the one that's assuming that it's about porn. He's distracted because he's thinking about porn. Maybe, maybe he's actually thinking that he's a little self-conscious. Maybe he's thinking he's tired. Maybe he's thinking about something at work. If he is distracted, if you assume that's about porn, that's you in your thoughts bringing pornography into the bed, not him. And I know that that seems crazy, and I know that so many of you are going to get really defensive and say, well, he's the one that brought it in the first place. And I agree, he did bring it in the first place. But now you're the one that's perpetuating it with your own thoughts, right? Do you understand this? And that is what you have control over. If I could have prevented him from bringing it into the bedroom in the first place, I would have, ladies. I would teach you how to do that. I would be all over. I would be shouting this from the rooftops of here's how you change your husband. Here's how we make sure he never watches porn again, but we're focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing on the thing that you can't actually control. You have no control over his behavior. We have no control over whether or not he watches porn. We actually have no control over whether or not he thinks about porn while he's in bed with you. And yes, ladies, my husband has done that and I have been there and I know how hard that is. Okay. But you also don't recognize what I want you guys to see. And this is so powerful is recognize how much control you have over how much you're bringing it into the bedroom, how much you're bringing bringing it into your sexual relationship with your spouse. And we don't give ourselves enough credit for how much we can control. What you can control is whether or not you are bringing it in, whether you're thinking that he's thinking about it, whether you're comparing yourself to the women that he's seen on the screen. Now, most of the time our brain is really sneaky and does this in a way where we're worried about what he's thinking, right? Where we say things like, well, I'm worried that he's thinking about Um, what he's seen. I'm worried that he's comparing me to something he's seen. Well, we don't actually know what he's thinking, nor do we have any indication of that. Right then at that moment, you're the one thinking about it. You're the one comparing yourself to him on the screen, to what he's seen on the screen. You're the one that is thinking about him watching porn. You're the one bringing pornography in between you and him in that moment. And again, this is the best news I could give you because you have so much more power over the pornography than you think you do. And you have so much more control over how you approach your sexual relationship with your spouse, even if he's still watching porn, than you think you do. Because porn and sex are not the same. They are not related. Yes, it is affecting your sexual relationship. And yes, it will continue to affect your sexual relationship as long as you're not okay with it. And as long as he's still indulging in it, then yes, you will still be affected by it. Okay, but you have so much more control over how you are affected by it and whether or not you choose to let it to continue to affect you the way that it has been. 
If you find yourself having these sexual triggers, having these sexual expectations, struggling trying to meet his sexual expectations, if you find yourself still understanding logically that pornography is not about sex, but not fully believing it, or it doesn't really resonate with you because it feels so personal, or if you sometimes sex can feel icky now that he watches porn, then I wanna encourage you to come coach with me this week. Okay, sign up for that three-day class and come join me so that I can help you work through this because the only reason that porn and sex are still connected in your brain is because you're choosing to keep them connected. And I know that one of the scariest thing, one of the biggest reasons why we keep porn and sex connected in our brains as the wife is because it's very tempting to want to think that it has something to do with us. Even though that sounds crazy, even though it brings up a lot of insecurity, even then though we feel like we're not enough if that's the case, one of the reasons it's so tempting to keep that connection is because then we can do something about it. And I did this for years. I was here. Okay, I thought this must have something to do with me. And so I was always said yes, and I put on lingerie and I lost weight and I changed my hair and I did all of these things, tried to be really sexy, tried to turn him on in different ways, tried to be really adventurous in the bedroom, tried to become more confident and it was terrible and it didn't actually work because what I was trying to do was be something sexually for him so that it could satisfy whatever sexual thing I thought he was lacking so that he would stop going to pornography. But I had it all wrong, ladies. And if that sounds familiar, if that's what you're trying to do, it's never going to work. Why? Because he's not. it's not his sexual dissatisfaction that is driving him to porn. Sexually, dis- sexually dissatisfied men may watch porn, but that's not why they're watching porn. They're probably sexually dissatisfied because they're watching porn, okay? Not the other way around, okay? Trying to change the reason that your husband is watching pornography sounds really romantic and really noble. We want to be part of the solution, okay? But we can't be part of the solution because we're not part of the problem. Again, ladies, most of you, your husband started looking at this decades before you guys even met. He has had pornography in his life longer than he's known you. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your sex life and it can't be fixed by your sex life. And it's very tempting, again, to want it to be part of it because then we can do something about it. Then we are more in control, but it's a false sense of control. This lie that we believe that porn is about sex is a very sneaky attempt for our brain to control the outcome of the situation. Because if we are somehow involved in that, right, if we are a part of his sexual life, then again, maybe there's something we can do. It's like a puzzle. Our brain wants to figure it out. All right, what can I adjust? What can I tweak? What formula, what piece of this formula can I just shift enough to create a different result, a different answer? But it's never going to work because you are not part of the problem. And this is the answer that our brain doesn't like. Our brain doesn't like that we're not part of the problem because then we can't do anything about it. Then we just have to sit and accept how we feel and how we're affected. And yes, that is true, but that's the stuff that we actually have control over. Our brain right now, ladies, your brain is spending so much time and energy on what it can't control. Imagine how much more progress you could make if you just shifted that for a minute and believed me for half a second and said, what if Jolene's right? What if there is actually something? What if I'm focusing on the wrong thing? What if I have a lot more control over this situation than I actually think that I do? What if it's all internal? And if you shifted, used all that energy right now that you're focusing externally and shifted it inward, you would skyrocket. You would heal so much faster. You would be able to conquer all the insecurities, all the vulnerabilities. You would be able to show up in a way that felt amazing to you And you would be able to have the relationship with your spouse that you want, not the one that you're trying to force, right? Not the one that you're projecting, not the fake one, not the facade of the relationship, but you would actually have the relationship that you want. Again, I know this is a lot, and this is not an easy thing to digest. Believe me, I know I was there, okay? But the world is telling you right now that porn is about sex, and it's not. What it's doing is it's hijacking sex, and that is not the same thing. So again, if you feel like your sex life has been ruined because of porn, come work with me and I will help you uncover the lies that your brain has connected so that we can retrain your brain and get you to a place where you can actually enjoy your sexuality, enjoy your sex life, 
and come to your spouse confidently and not make his pornography problem mean anything about you sexually or the sex life and relationship that you have with him because they are completely unrelated. All right, ladies, I love you so much. I hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day. That sounds like the worst ending for a podcast ever because I just talked about this and I'm like, all right, have fun on Valentine's Day. But I do. I hope you guys have an amazing Valentine's Day. And if I would love to spend it with you. And if you want to spend it with me, come coach with me over the next three days. I would love to see you there. Okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to do it. Um, We're going to have an amazing coaching week, amazing coaching experience. And I'd love to see you there and spend my Valentine's Day with you. I love you, ladies. I'll talk to you guys next week on a brand new episode of the podcast. So take care. All right, ladies, it's time to rise up and take charge of your healing. And I have the best way for you to do it. I have created a lifetime access coaching program that I have designed specifically for you and exactly what you're going through right now. This is where I help you develop a personal mastery of all the tools that you're learning here on the podcast in order for you to create a permanent change. Go to my website, jolenewin.com. You will find all the information there and you can sign up today and we will start going forward. I can't wait to see you there.